What's up guys, Alex Cohen here with a new video to explain how exactly did negative oil prices happen. First I'm going to walk you through what happened today, Monday, April 20th. How did we get here? What is the cause of the supply shock? And where we are going? As you can see from the chart, oil prices have been holding quite steadily between $50 and $60 a barrel. That all changed in the middle of March. As you can see, the oil prices dropped precipitously from 60 to 30 to 20. And then today, the unthinkable happened. It went below zero. Yikes is right. In this screenshot, as you can see, here's a quote of the April 2020 crude price contracts, which ex set to expire, as you can see from the first yellow box, April 21st. Now, you're not reading that wrong. That low today, oil prices fell to minus $40.32 a barrel. How did we get here? Well, let's start from the top. We had a high expected demand for oil because of lofty expectations of global GDP growth, both in emerging markets and developed markets. We had record low and even negative interest rates, which is fueling this corporate debt bubble, allowing these oil companies, which otherwise would not have been able to qualify for loans, they're taking out debt, and thus they're able to produce record levels of US and foreign oil production. That all changed in March of 2020. Global GDP growth expectations came back to earth. Oil companies, however, were slow to respond because, hey, they issued all this debt, so they really were reluctant to, to, count, to cut their rigs and their, their oil production because they had to make the money back to pay off the debt. So they started reducing the rig counts in March and started cut, cutting capital expenditures, but honestly, it was a little too late. And then we also had a Saudi Arabia and Russian oil trade war. So with the Saudis and the Russian uh, people, they came together and they realized, hey, oil prices are plummeting. We're going to lose our money. So we have to get together and cut oil production so we can stop uh, oil prices from going down and maybe even raise them again. However, Russia didn't want to didn't want to hear about it. So Saudi Arabia broke out into an all out war, started producing oil hand over fist, causing oil prices to plummet more than 50 percent. And on top of all of this, we've had the COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus global pandemic, which is set to reduce the demand for oil by over 30 million barrels a day. And when and when everyone came together, it's it's almost too little too late. And finally today, why you know why did it happen today? Well, the April 21st contract expires tomorrow, and everyone realized that hey, we're gonna have a whole bunch of new oil coming tomorrow, but nobody wants it, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So nobody wants it. Well, where do we store it once we get it? Well, we have places in the United States, in Oklahoma, in Texas, in pipelines, but they're all full to the brim, maxed out, sold out, no more capacity. And then we also have something called VLCCs, which is um, very large crude carriers. These are just big, big ships. And the six month contracts to basically store your oil on these big ships and you can store up to 2 million barrels of oil is the average is a hundred thousand dollars per day last year it only averaged 29,000 a day and today the spot rate went up to a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a day so effectively last year to today the price of storing oil in this big ship went up by five times. 
So where do we go from here? Well, four things to think about. OPEC plus, which is Russia, Saudi Arabia, and the other members of the group agreed finally to production cuts, but it's only 10 million barrels per day and it goes to April 2022. But we already mentioned demand is expected to drop by $30 million per day. And to be honest, I think that's a conservative measure. And we also don't know how long it will take to recover. Second, VLCC and other storage prices will continue to rise until the prices to store the oil reach an equilibrium. So eventually people will only pay so much to store the oil and eventually it will correct and people will stop producing it because they'll realize, hey, I can't afford to store it so I can't afford to produce it. Three, we're likely to see a wave of bankruptcies which will also slow down production possibly. And four is, will we have a speedy recovery? So some economists think we're gonna have a V-shaped recovery, a U-shaped recovery. I think we're gonna have a bathtub recovery, which is basically we're gonna be walking through the valley of death for quite a while, probably for at least the next few quarters, uh, which is outside the scope of this video. But these are all things that we need to think about where we are potentially headed. Now, let's look at what the prices actually tell us. So. May 2020 contracts, as, you, as we can see, uh, they're trading, the last price was at $1 per barrel. And if we see, if we look out to August and September, we see that uh, futures prices are trading at $29 and $30 a barrel. This is a concept called contango, which basically means that prices in the future are expected to be higher than they are today. It's very similar to yield curves and interest rates. Uh, you know, if you have an inverted yield curve, that's called uh, backwardation in futures uh, in, in futures markets. Uh, again, beyond the scope of this video, but just note that in a few months, everyone thinks it's going to go back to thirty dollars a barrel. Now, thirty dollars a barrel is still low compared to the sixty dollar high we saw uh, before in March. But honestly. $30 was really before all this supply shortages, uh, supply shortages happened, uh, the COVID-19 happened, everything happened. So honestly, I think we'll have to see, but I, I, I think this $30 number will be drastically different once we get to August and September. Stay tuned.